last decade has seen a big push towards globalization by Indian companies and it has been a pretty bumpy ride for some. But experts like Accenture's Raghugulapalli believe that this move will pay off in the long run. Indian companies have uh, built a strong momentum, especially over the last 5-6 years as far as their uh, internationalization moves are concerned. Uh, two primary observations on this. I think firstly the nature of internationalization itself, that is changing. If I look back uh, maybe about 10 years back, international markets were really about uh, you know export markets. Uh, we exported manufactured products which essentially uh, uh, you know leveraged our inherent low cost operations, good quality, that was the kind of positioning. Uh, which is really not an internationalization strategy, but more an export strategy. What's happening now, and especially over the last five, six years, is that uh, increasingly Indian companies are looking at aggressive internationalization moves, uh, primarily around, and there are primarily three drivers. One, they're looking at access to uh, markets, access to markets and brands, access to technology partnerships and product portfolio. And finally, also in some cases, linked to the first two, is really access to manufacturing operations and in some cases also distribution operations. And this may help Indian companies achieve the size and scale to compete with global giants. But with these opportunities will also come a host of challenges. Uh, historically, if you look at uh, Indian companies, they've uh, they've been a product-centric organization and what I mean by that is essentially they've had a set of products, a set of capabilities and they've said which markets can I really create demand for my products. So they need to move from that kind of a paradigm to a more customer-centric paradigm where they're essentially saying okay if these are the target markets that I want to play in, what do I need to do to fulfill, to plug the gap in my product portfolio as well as plug the gap in my capabilities. So do I need to buy, do I need to align, do I need to get into some partnerships to create the right kind of products which are relevant in the markets that I want to grow in. So that's one big change, understanding of the customers and markets in a much more intimate way and aligning your portfolio to that. I think the second big challenge that I see is really from a brand perspective, historically Indian companies have been relatively weaker on that front and that's got largely to do with the fact that from a positioning perspective, we've essentially leveraged our low cost production, low cost, good quality production, that plank uh, uh, to really position ourselves on th in these markets. Now, as we look at accessing better technology, accessing, gaining access to these markets, we have an opportunity to up the ante as far as brand building goes. So I see that happening in the next five to seven years. We will clearly see in select segments some Indian brands, you know, making their presence felt. As Indian companies globalize, challenges will come along with opportunities. But for now, Crompton Greaves and its management has to look at the challenges on the ground. Before the crisis hit, the Thapur-led Avanta group of which Crompton Greaves is a part had an ambitious target of reaching $10 billion in revenues, with two big plays, CG and Paper Maker Build. That has been pushed. I think the reality is that you, we, we have definitely scaled back what we wanted to achieve because it's just the, the circumstances are not allowing you to do it. You know, you know, I may have all kinds of wishes and dreams, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't control the marketplace and I don't control the market and the investment environment. And both at an Indian now and at a global level have been very poor. That's the that's that's a reality. And the second part of the reality, then, if I don't have access to capital, automatically. I will slow down uh, if I'm not able to deploy, uh, you know, uh, what you call capital effectively and efficiently. So we have been, uh, CG in its own way has been a, a, a much easier story than, uh, than built, you know, because in built the, the investment comes in dollops and they are increasingly big, bigger dollops. And when I look at my business, no matter how passionate I am about it, and I am very passionate about all my businesses, I just wonder how sustainable this can be in the long term when I have no access to capital. All right, three years, I mean, we funded a huge investment in capacity increase and all with pretty much leverage debt because I'm even in the middle of it when the IPO, when the tsunami happened, Greek default, we had to pull our IPO, which was just about to get priced. 
So we've had to go out and find other ways of raising capital, doing this, doing that, to continue and complete our mm. investment plans. Now I have to unroll that and unwind that, which we are in the process of, of, of beginning to do. But when I look at everything else, I mean, the, at the end of the day, the, in the demand for paper in India is not slowing down. So, you know, you have I, to I have to put invest. capital to work again. So when I look at that and I'm saying, you know, you know, at, at 12 percent, 13 percent cost of money, all right, is, is, is this really what I should be doing, you know, uh, where there's nothing today in the Indian market environment for uh, barring the demand for paper. Uh, as a manufacturer of paper today in India, I mean, the what does that imply? What, what should I glean between no, the it, lines? It, <laughs> it, 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 no, it implies that as uh, when you are looking at these strategies, all right, this kind of a disruption that has happened, you have to go back and and retool and relook at and rethink. So I may turn around and say, look, my strategy is fine. That we will just go ahead and uh, we will do raise money, do whatever else it is, but we will not make an investment in paper manufacturing for the next four years. So that's a possibility. It is a possibility. But but if you're a group as old or, or companies as old as yours, yeah. uh, you've been through a couple of ups and downs in your journey. Yeah. So if you were to look five, ten years down the line, how different would Avanta be? And what would the journey be like? And what would you think uh, in that context, if you were sitting around across the table then, what would we be talking about in terms of your group? Oh, I, I think that certain businesses that we are in today, you might not see us in those businesses. You know, very clearly. I mean, to me, uh, there are other opportunities that are coming up there, mm -hmm. you know, which for which I will look always and say, you know, is this capital deployed here? Uh, well deployed? Am I getting a decent return? Or if I'm not getting a decent return, why should I? You're essentially saying that you've become so global that yeah. your umbilical cord with India is it, it, increasingly... No, uh, it depends. You can question it. You're in a position yeah. where you can question it because no. of what has happened. Look, uh, I'm Indian. It's the only passport I have and I value it, you know. But in business, the day you've decided that you're going to open up your economy and make it global, all right, okay. Uh, and I'm the first one to say that that has been the right decision, okay. Then as a businessman, as an investor, I also must always make sure that I'm looking at my opportunities globally. As you start a new year, can there be anything that can ease the situation? And make Gautam Thapar say that he will get your, <laughs> stick the course. You know, get your infrastructure investments going. Get that 150 to 300,000 crores moving in the economy. That will drive. It's maybe as a manufacturer, I'm not investing, but at least my customers are investing and therefore I'm able to push goods. There. And it, you start investing 200,000, 250,000 crores in infrastructure, my paper business gets impacted. You need more documentation, you need more this, you need that, you buy. It's the same thing, you, my engineering business gets tremendously impacted because suddenly the demand for industrial goods, everything starts going up. So get that going in there. It creates jobs, all right, of the right kind all right, that, you, that you want out there, etc., which also drives your consumption factor going. I mean, this economy has been dependent on handouts and consumption for the last uh, three years. No manufacturing or investment goes. So if there's one thing you can unblock, which is that, get it going. Figure out how to get it go. In many senses, Crompton Greaves and groups like Avanta represent the possibilities of how Indian companies can acquire, adapt and expand so that the world truly becomes a stage. Now it's for the government, desperate for investments, to ensure that companies such as these have more reason to stay rooted in India.